So uh, this is just going to be a really quick uh, presentation. It's only a lightning talk, and it's kind of technical. Uh, I'm just going to show a bunch of uh, diagrams, basically. But I'll, you know, you can always find me to get more information. Uh, I'm Michelle Steigerwaltz. Uh, this is the planet is very large, uh, and I currently am at Mapbox. Um, a lot of this comes from a tutorial I wrote on the OSM protocol buffer. Uh, file format, which you can uh, get at this URL here, and also uh, a Dockerized version of the OSM web stack called Cartouche, which is open sourced. Uh, so that's some of the things I've been working at while I was, you know, while I've been at Mapbox. Uh, and so the whole point of Cartouche was to make it very easy for people to get up and running with OSM and import all the data in the planet file. It's only 40 gigabytes, but it actually takes a very, very long time to import. And I'm not talking like you leave it on overnight. I'm talking like days, um, weeks, depending on your performance. And if it ever quits, you have to start over again. And so the API DB, which is what the website runs on, uh, is just the way it's designed, it's, it's a little bit slower, uh, 20 times. And that emphasis is actually from the documentation. I didn't add that. Uh, which, so basically what happens is for the last 10 years, uh, the OSM stack has been being like, oh, here's some more data. And, you know, taking those things one on one, you know, is, is not that difficult. It's still quite difficult because there's still a great volume of data. But then to come in 10 years later and be like, yeah, I want to process all of that right now um, gets to be a bit complicated. And so what people generally do is uh, they use OpenStreetMap data extracts, uh, talking to people when they're doing this sort of thing. They just take whatever local region that they're operating in, download that extract and import it. And the cool thing, though, so I started digging into the format itself. Uh, you know, check out that tutorial for more on that. Uh, but the cool thing is that um, the underlying file format uh, supports random access at the file block granularity. And basically what that means is um, there's a, uh, these four bytes at the top here tell you what the length of the next bit of data is. So you can actually skip over them as much as you want. And if you use HTT partial range requests, that uh, allows you to go to any part of a, this 40 gigabyte file and pick up wherever you want. Um, and so that was a, a header packet. And here's a data packet. We don't need to worry about what's in that gray box. Uh, there's not time, but essentially, the format is just this thing repeated over and over again, and you can grab any chunk from there that you want. And as long as you concatenate the header file, that's any chunk from there is actually a fully standalone bit of data, uh, which opens up a lot of cool things that you can do. Um, and one of those things you can do is um, just take any one of these blocks, take the header, put it in there, standalone, and um, they only have one type of data, nodes, ways, dense nodes, relations. Um, so there's no, there's no mix blocks is, is one of the um, annoying parts. But it's nice that instead of having to sit and download a 40 gigabyte file, you could theoretically just start with the first chunk, pre-download the next chunk while you're importing. And you could also get some concurrency going on uh, if you disabled the Postgres constraints. Um, so this isn't something that happens, but I, you know, working on this, I've been thinking, you know, perhaps um, if uh, we organize this format, this pro you know, primitive data format into something tile-based uh, and provided an index of that, just the byte level index for random access, we could actually have dynamic streaming uh, based on uh, a bounding box to return you that region with no processing whatsoever. I see someone very excited in the back there. <laughs> Um, and the problem is that you're going to have to duplicate nodes. 
Um, I only have 17 seconds, but check it out. You can add this patch to osmosis, and duplication isn't a problem anymore. It's on conflict, do nothing. And um, imagine like if we had this tile-based OSMP ABS, what we could do if we just add some uh, CGI map interface on top of it. We could even store diffs from multiple data sources. Okay, mic drop, bye. <laughs> there will be no questions.